Hello everyone, this is David the Remit White. This video is going to be on Orthodox Christian terminology, specifically philosophical terms. We're also going to be talking about heresies and what they, in a basic idea, mean. And what, what are you going to be expecting from this video is essentially that I'm going to be listing a bunch of different terms that I commonly use in, in my videos. I gotta just give you a basic idea, a very, very basic beginner level explanation. We're not gonna go too in depth, but just how we use those terms today, what they mean, and so on and so forth. So, without further ado, let's begin. Uh, I wanna start with the term God. We're gonna start very basic. Um, it has multiple different meanings. I'm gonna go with the two main ones. The first meaning is a, the divine first principle, right? The soul first cause. God, it's synonymous with the Father. So in that sense, only God the Father is applicable for that term. If, we meet, if we're talking about a person possessing divine nature, right? Uh, then that applies for all of the persons of the Trinity. Usia answers the question of what are they? Uh, it's a universal meaning that it, to give you an example, if you have two human beings, right, they, they're both consubstantial, they both have the same human essence, but they're both human beings. So in that sense, that's what usia essence basically means. Uh, when we look at the term nature, it's essentially a synonym for usia, but in the way it's used is different. So when we speak of usia, usia is a universal nature, whereas when we use the term nature, it denotes a particular essence. So to give you a good example, there is a universal human essence that we can speak of that all human beings share. And then there is a particular human essence that is particularized in a person. So I, you know, I and some random person, we, we both share the same human nature, but at the same time, my human nature, my body and soul, which makes up human nature, have different characteristics, right? Uh, they're both particularized in different ways, so to say. And in early usage, the term nature was very flexible. It meant, usi, it meant person. It at times meant particular. It at times meant universal. It at times just meant component or just something. So I just want to make that note as well. Hypostasis is today commonly referred means person. Personal hypostasis, therefore, is immutable. And what that means is it doesn't change, right? So me 10 years ago and me today are the same exact person. And me 10 years later is still going to be the same person. Um, in, in a literal sense, and I want to mention this because some people get stuck up on this so much. In a literal sense, uh, substance is what hypostasis means, right? So this, so hypostasis translated to Latin means substantia. Uh, but the meaning of it is distinct, right? The meaning is distinct. It's not the same thing, right? It doesn't mean substance the way we use it today. Uh, it more so means person. There's a distinction between substance or usia or nature, whatever you call it. There is a distinction between nature and person. And... It is approached apophatically, so instead of talking about what it is, we know from what it isn't. So it isn't, we know that it is not the mind, it is not the intellect, it's not will, it's not nature, it's not the soul, it's not the body. Prosopon has multiple meanings, and it's used in the Bible. Um, it can mean mask, it can mean appearance, it just can just mean face. Uh, it means, it's, it got translated into persona in Latin which means person, and it could also mean manifested reality. After the Council of Chalcedon, it has become a synonym for hypostasis. Property will be the characteristics of a thing. It's proper to nature, and to, I'll just give you examples of what a property is, right? So divine properties that God has is immutability, immateriality, right? Infinite, being infinite, being all-powerful. These are all properties characteristics that God has. Energy answers the question, what is it that they are doing? It is, in English, commonly translated as operation activity. It's, in Orthodox theology, it's distinct from essence. 
in hypostasis means something that is particularized in a mode of being. An example will be human nature. My human nature is particularized in my human personhood, right? And it's not only human nature that can be particularized, right? The way I use my energies, my human operations is also particularized in the when I walk five meters left, that doesn't mean all human beings walk five meters left, right? It's something particular to myself. Will is the impetus for energy. And one thing is that the will and energy imply each other. So as I said, with the analogy of walking, if I walk five, five meters left, I have to first will to do that. And then I do that act activity. And so they both imply each other. So there's a connection between will and energy. Communicatio idiomatum in English is known as exchange of properties. And it refers specifically to in Christology to the divine human properties in Christ. It's the idea that in Christ, human divine properties are interchanged and that the human properties become divine properties. So a good example is that we can speak of God eating, God walking on water, God suffering on a cross. Well, can God eat? Well, no, that's not proper to his divinity, but in his humanity it is. But we can still say God ate because of the incarnation. And so because of this, we can speak of the Virgin Mary as Theotokos, since the person she gave birth to is God, even though Christ only got his human nature, not the divine nature from the Theotokos. Cataphaticism means speaking of God as what he is rather than what he isn't. And apophaticism is speaking of God by what he is not rather than what he is. So in terms of the divine essence, we have an apophatic theology most of the time. Uh, generally speaking, most of the time, in essence, all the time. Distinction, the term distinction, I, I feel like a lot of people don't really understand what distinction really means. A lot of people get stuck up on this. Distinction means, it's the, it's basically the idea that there's one thing, and this one thing is not the other thing as well. So, essence is the being of something, and energy is the activity of that being. So they're distinct, they're different things, right? So, But another example is that in Christ, human nature is not the divine nature. Divine nature is not the human nature. They're two different things, right? Human nature, divine nature, there's a distinction. And so therefore, it implies kind of a plurality, right? Persons, right? The person in the Trinity, they're distinct. They're not the same person. They're distinguished. And this implies plurality. Divine simplicity is the idea that God does not have any parts, and this is accepted by Orthodox Christians. Um, some people make this mistake. They say, we don't accept divine simplicity. Actually, we do. We do believe in divine simplicity. What we don't believe is absolute divine simplicity, which is also referred to as Neoplatonic simplicity. It is this heretical divine simplicity model wherein God, because he's not made of parts, their logical conclusion is that cannot have distinctions in him because distinction in this model means division or separation or composition or whatever. Hypostatic property is a distinguishing mark of a person. So, for example, I am tall, I'm Turkish, I have a YouTube channel, right? These are things that I have that distinguish me from other people. If we are to give example from the Trinity, the Father is the sole cause of the Godhead. The Son is begotten from the Father and the Holy Spirit is spirated from the Father, right? So, spiration, being begotten, these distinguish the persons of the Trinity, Theosis means deification. It's becoming like God by grace. If it's not by nature at all, because that will be idolatry, it will be polytheism. And it is done by participating in the divine nature through the divine energies, as the, as St. Peter says in the Bible. Reception theory is the, is the epistemological theory where dogma, although it doesn't change, is certain becomes epistemically certain to be known as dogma when several conditions are met these conditions as saint vincent and saint augustine says is consensus antiquity and universality if a if a dogma if a doctrine passes these conditions then it is known to be a dogma a council is the gathering of bishops to discuss certain issues these bishops can be administrative it could be theological, it could just be canonical, it could be a canonical status of a bishop, what are they supposed to do, right? So it could be 
these things. Ecumenical council are dogmatic councils that are called on by the emperor. <coughs> so it is also known as an imperial council. All ecumenical councils and the pronouncements are dogmatic, but not all dogmatic councils are ecumenical. There are seven, seven commonly accepted in orthodoxy. I will say it's nine. Um, Nicaea one, Constantinople one. Right, the first seven ones, a lot of us know. I will also add Constantinople four and the Hezekiah synods in the 14th century as ecumenical councils. So they basically pass the... Uh, the qualifications <clears throat> now let's move on to the heresies the basic heresies arianism is the trinitarian christological heresy which rejects the divinity of christ in essence it's very neoplatonist i've made a video on this topic you can go check that out apollinarianism is a christological heresy when there is a rejection of human soul or mind in christ uh, a lot of apollinarians will identify personhood with the soul or with the mind and then it was later amended to that amended that personhood is not identical to the soul or the mind, but rather it's inside the soul or the mind. Modalism is the Trinitarian heresy where God is one person in three different manifestations. So it's not the Trinity, it's not the Trinity basically. Nestorianism is the Christological heresy where the two natures of Christ are connected in conjunction. Uh by v by the unity of will which this model implies two distinct persons rather than one person that is called christ monophysitism is an umbrella term of christological heresies who argue that in christ there is only one nature there are three exa main examples there's a eutychian example where christ is one mixed nature there's a polinarian example where christ is one nature because christ is not fully human and there's a seventh example where Christ is one hypostasis, one hypostasis out of two natures. Out of two hypostases, rather. Monotheism is a Christological heresy where in Christ there is said to be only one will instead of two, a human and a divine will. And this shall cover all that I want to cover for this video. As I said, it's a very basic, this should give you a very basic idea. Um... I go more in detail in many of my other videos, but as I said, this is point of this video was to basically give you a, a general basic idea of what, what these terms mean. So when I use these terms, keep them in mind. Um, hopefully it, well, it's not too difficult. I try to keep it very simple and yeah, that's it. So thank you all for watching this video. Uh, subscribe if you like and watch my other videos. If you, if you like this kind of content, I'll see you guys in the next video. God be with you all.